Hey enchanters, dreamers and warriors of Prithian, welcome back to another episode of Fantasy Faults. I'm Lily and today we've got a treat as grand as the Night Court's Starfall Festival itself. Yes, you've guessed it. We're diving into a realm of high stakes, epic romance and a resplendent magic with none other than the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, A Court of Wings and Ruin by the Queen of Fairy Tales, Sarah J. Maas. Buggle up as this is a thrill ride through realms brimming with danger, deception and a conflict that could fracture the very fabric of their world. Let's unfold those wings and soar right into it. A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas is the third book of the Akotar series. It's a fantasy romance new adult book rated for readers 17 plus. The book was published May 2nd, 2017 by Bloomsbury Publishing. It has 720 pages and took me about 12 hours to read. A similar book is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This to the bullet points. Now let me give you the summary of the book. If you've been following Fear's journey from her time as a human to, well, everything that followed, you know we're in for twists that will make the cauldron itself swirl with envy. After the harrowing trials and heart-wrenching revelations of the last book, A Court of Wings and Ruin picks up right where we left off, with our heroine Fear Archeron returning to the treacherous spring court undercover. Oh, the intrigue. And let me tell you, Fear is playing a deadly game of deceit as a double agent, seeking to gather information on Tamlin's actions and alliances. But Fear is not alone. She also carries the weight of her past and the hopes of her true home, the Night Court, on her shoulders. As the story unfolds, we watch the Night Court come together to face their greatest challenge yet. With fear once again at their side, they must gather forces forging new alliances with the other courts to confront a common opponent. One that threatens not only fear and her loved ones, but the whole of this magical world. The stakes, impossibly high. The battles, breathtaking. With the threat of the big conflict looming like a shadow over the entirety of Prithian, Fear must use all the skills she's acquired to play a dangerous game. It's a world of politics and power plays where allies could become foes and enemies might just become saviors. But as the looming conflict threatens to destroy the world she's come to cherish, Fear must decide whom to trust among the dazzling and lethal high lords all by navigating the dark and alluring powers that pulls within her. Can she protect the ones she loves as well as the countless innocents in peril? With her sisters, her heart and her world on the line, fear might find that the greatest battles often rage within ourselves. This to the summary, now let me give you my impression. One of the incredible threads woven throughout A Court of Wings and Ruin is the concept of healing and facing one's inner demons. In this book, Sarah J. Maas masterfully portrays how the scars of our past, both visible and hidden, shape who we are but do not define our destinies. And let's talk about the strength of unity, folks. I'm not just speaking about the power of love, although there's plenty of that to go around, but it's also about alliances, friendships, and the strength of a diverse group battling against a common opponent. Throughout the series, and brought to a head in this book, we understand that it's not just the fight that's important, but who stands beside you during that fight. The world of Prithian in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series is divided into seven distinct courts, each governed by its own High Lord and with its unique characteristics, cultures and climates. So here's a brief description of each of the seven courts. First, to the spring court, lush and vibrant, 
characterized by constant renewal and rebirth. With its blooming flowers, mild weather and abundant greenery, it represents a world awakening from the winter's grip. The world here is often light and fresh, but underlying secrets and tensions may undercut its seemingly serene appearance. Then we go to the summer court. The summer court is depicted as a warm, tropical haven with sun-kissed beaches and clear blue waters. It's a court of wealth and trade known for its maritime prowess and the joyous nature of its inhabitants. The atmosphere is often festive with abundant seafood and celebrations, reflecting the leisurely beauty of endless summer days. The autumn court, characterized by fiery colors and the chill of encroaching winter, the autumn court is a place of transformation, redolent with falling leaves and crisp air. The the court is a reflection of the harvest time with forest of changing leaves and the rustic charm of the season. It can also carry a sense of underlying decay as a natural cycle moves toward dormancy and death. The winter court is a frozen snowy realm where the cold has a beauty of its own. The landscape is dominated by ice, snow and starkly beautiful winter scenes. The people of the winter court are known for their resilience, having adapted to the harsh climate with a sense of rugged loyalty to their traditions and each other. Resplendent in its radiance, the day court is synonymous with light. It's known for its scholarly pursuits and the value it places on knowledge and learning. Its people live under the bright sun and the court is often associated with the apex of daily activity, industry, progress and pursuit of enlightenment. The dawn court represents new beginnings and the hope that comes with the first light of the day. It's an aura of serenity and the rejuvenating qualities of the early morning. This court emphasizes harmony and balance and is often seen as a place of beauty, peace and fresh starts. Then last but not least, the night court. Comprising both the serenity of Velaris, the city of starlight, and the strength of the Illyrian military camps, the Night Court is a land of mysteries and contradictions. It's associated with darkness and dreams, but also with the hidden depth and the protective embrace of the night. The Night Court has a variety of landscapes, from tranquil nocturnal beauty to rugged daunting terrains demanding respect and strength. Throughout a court of wings and ruin, the Night Court becomes not just a setting, but a character in its own right, offering a complex backdrop for the novel's unfolding drama and the evolving journey of the story's protagonists. The Night Court is a place of stark contrast and mesmerizing beauty holding both the intimate charm and the awe-inspiring grandeur befitting Sarah J. Maas's richly detailed world. Speaking of the world building, phenomenal. We get to delve deeper into the history and politics of Prithian. Our understanding of the courts and their high lords expands, providing a lush backdrop to the book's dramatic scenes. It's clear that every court, every character has a role to play in this brawling tale of love, betrayal, sacrifice and redemption. You can't discuss A Court of Wings and Ruin without marveling at the depth and growth of the characters. Fear, our art-loving protagonist, is a study in resilience and resourcefulness. Her evolution from the first book to now is nothing short of remarkable. If you want to know more about the captivating supporting cast, I recommend you watch this video. And without giving anything away, new alliances form that will have you rooting for characters you never expect. Just when you think you understand someone, Mars throws a curveball that utterly shifts your perspective. To the book highlights. As we edge toward the conclusion of this adventure, let's highlight a few spoiler-free wonders you'll find in A Court of Wings and Ruin. Prepare for battles that leave you breathless, 
friendships that bring a tear to your eye and wit that will leave you chuckling even amid despair. The book is masterful in its crescendos and decrescendos, weaving quite introspective moments with explosive revelations and action-packed scenes. It's like a sumptuous feast for the emotions. You'll be full yet still craving for more. And if that's not enough to tantalize you, the climatic build-up toward the story's resolution is a stroke of narrative magic. The questions we've been asking, the fates we've been pondering, they all rush towards an ending that is both satisfying and provocative, leaving us eager for the next chapter in the Akotar universe. Now to my critiques. Like I already mentioned in the previous books, the pacing felt uneven. Here are sections in the narrative that feel drawn out with extensive descriptions or slowed by political intrigue, while other segments, particularly near the end, rush through significant events, battles, and resolutions. Although the central characters are well developed, I found that secondary characters lack depth and that their story arcs or motives aren't as fleshed out as they could be, which leaves their actions feel a bit contrived or their fates less impactful. Certain plot twists and turns were predictable, especially for seasoned readers of the genre, with familiar tropes and themes present that lessened the impact of the would-be surprising developments. Then there were inconsistencies or lack of explanation for particular aspects of the world's magic rules or the political structure. This becomes more apparent as the story evolves. Then given that romance plays a significant part in the story, I felt that the romantic subplots sometimes overshadowed other narrative elements such as individual character growth or the broader political conflict occurring in the plot. Then I think the book could have benefited from tighter editing. Cloaking in at over 700 pages, it's a lengthy read, and parts of the novel seem extraneous or overly detailed, contriving little to the overall advancement of the plot. This to my impression, now let's go to the conclusion. A Court of Wings and Ruin, what a journey. Sarah J Maas doesn't just raise the stakes, she throws them into the stratosphere. Our beloved fear, once a hunted mortal, now stands as a fierce defender of not just her court, but all of Prithian. From breathless battles to heart-stopping strategy, from the depths of despair to peaks of triumph, this book delivers on every promise. And so, in the spirit of the Inner Circle's unbreakable bonds, I'm giving a court of wings and ruin four and a half out of five stars. It's a testament to the power of resilience, the depth of love, and the triumph of the unyielded spirit. Mars turns narrative into art, painting with an emotional palette that will leave you absolutely spellbound. So there you have it, dear viewers. Without venturing into the deadly and forbidden territory of spoilers, we've journeyed through the pivotal themes, the chords, highlights, and the critique of A Court of Wings and Ruin. Sarah J. Maas has once again proven why she's a juggernaut in the young adult fantasy genre. So now, if you read the book, let me know in the comments below what you thought, without spoilers, of course. And if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Grab a copy, find yourself a cozy reading nook and prepare to be spellbound. Before you fly off on your own magical adventure, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any future trips across the fantastical world of literature. Until next time, keep those wings spread and your mind open to the endless possibilities that books like A Court of Wings and Ruin have in store. This has been Lily wishing you all a day as bright as Prithian's eternal sun. Thanks for watching and see you in the next fantastical video.